Hello, this is Joe again. So this is part two of making some collage envelopes for um, an ephemera holder. And where's my holder? Show you this really fast so you understand where we are at. We're just putting together some of these pretty collages that will go into a cover um, that will be on a separate video. So um, I've done a few already and I wanna show you this one. This one is the, um, the little Velcro tabs are pretty much dry. We put some stickers on here. That's where we left off on the last video. And um, just put this one together. I was kind of experimenting with using some little metal pieces. Um, these Velcro tabs are not dry yet, so I don't want to rip them, but that's what the little clasp is going to look like. We put a little stickers on there. So I'm gonna set these two aside and I'm gonna work on these last two. So um, this one is this lovely old book, dinosaur book, di dinosaur book. <laughs> it's a dictionary book page. It's a dinosaur I was thinking in my head because it's a very old book. It's from the 1950s and I love to use it to cover things. This page, um, this paper is really fragile, so it, it works really well actually for um, doing something like this. So then I have a little a lady. Um, this has been uh, colored a little bit. Um, and we've got some more little pieces. So I'm just really going to start putting these on, and I have a, I'm going to try out a slightly different closure for this envelope too. So let me work a little quickly here. Kind of translucent sticker, which is really pretty. And then we've got a frame. These are really nice. So I got some of these stickers in a swap. And, whoa, don't get all stuck, don't get all stuck. Okay, just won't. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize that inner part was like that. So let me put this one down and then we'll put the frame over it. We can always change our mind about what we're going to do. And it's really nice to kind of work, work with your instinct. Do I even have my microphone on? Wow, it's down there. Okay, this is my microphone, so sorry. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear it. If not, I'll have to put some subtitles or something up. So I'm not going to say everything all over again. I'm just going to keep working because I have a little timer that sort of helps me keep on track. And that's so if I want her to be here, I want the frame to be right here. Please go on straight. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Those are nice. Wish I had a few more of those. And then she's going to go on like this. So her head is kind of off center but framed a little bit. And she's pretty fragile, so I have to kind of <clears throat> use glue but use it carefully. This is um, a cutout from a very old, I think, a ladies magazine. That someone had colored and I found some at a flea market and I absolutely love Edwardian styles so it'll work really well all right um, now the the next thing that we need to do is uh, we're going to make a closure so we're going to do a button closure and it's going to have one button here and one button there. So, I mean, the other thing I could do would possibly be one button here and one button there. I think I kind of like that better. And the envelope is actually going to be probably attached on that side. That's the top. So here or here. 
I guess I'll keep it on the bottom. So you've seen, I think you've seen me do these little tabs. This is just manila folder, uh, some glue stick, pop some decorative paper over it. Let that dry for a second. Uh, this tab, we're going to do something a little different. So with double-sided tape, I stuck it on a piece of fabric. Um, we're going to make a little fabric tab. Now, this will be slightly harder to get even. The fabric is a little bendy. So when you pull your thumb away, it likes to pull out of shape a little bit. But as long as we got most of that there, that's good. And then if there's anything that needs to be trimmed, you can just really quickly trim it. It'll still be sticky, so you might not want it to be um, sticky like that. But there's your little fabric piece, and then you can put a little um, distress ink on it. And then we'll do the other one too. Okay, so now we have two buttons and they need to be um, hole punched and kind of tied. And I probably should have done this part off the film, but let me see if I can just do it quickly. So hole punch the buttons right like that. Oh, that was going through the, the tab. Okay, and then you need to take your little string. Oh, there's plastic. That's what it is. <laughs> Didn't even see that. The glare is funny. Okay, you need to take your string and find your holes again. Um, you're going to poke. So if you had a needle that would go through it, that would be good. Um, quite often that doesn't work with a lot of buttons. So I just poke my, try to get the string poked through the hole. And then pull it, pull it through. Have, well, wait a second, wait a second. We're going to poke it through the whole other side too. So yes, if you had a, uh, a needle that would do this, it would be better. Or even a very, very fine crochet hook, which I can't find right now. I had some, don't know where they went. Come on, Mr. String. I'm not going to do the other one because it's going to take too much time, but I'll do something different with it. Okay, so this is the little closure, the little closure part for the bottom. And then we're just going to poke that through. Everything you do takes time. And then you just tie a little knot. Maybe make it a little shorter. I'm using a very fine string for this, uh, this one, instead of like a stationary string or something. And then cut the yucky end off like that. Okay. So ordinarily I'd probably do this one like that too, but I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to punch it through. I'll just put it through um, the button so you'll still get probably do that. <laughs> you'll still get some of the string kind of tied cute, cutely around the middle part of the button here. Just trying to go a little faster. Okay, 
cute string for the buttons. And then ignore the fact that we have holes in it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the tacky glue to glue the button on. So this is one way of doing a closure system for the envelopes. Okay, so this button is glued on, which means that the string is going to be on this side of the button and it's going to be, this button is going to be here. Yeah, I can see you. You can see me. That's good. And then this button, um, the string is going to wrap in between the button and the tab. And we're going to glue that on like that. My glue's running out. That might be overkill on the glue, but... If you use too much, it will um, make a lot of extra, take a long time to dry. You don't need to use too much. Okay, so now for this one, that button is glued down. And we're not going to, um, we're not going to put the string in between the button. The button and the string is going to go. I mean, the string for the button closure is going to go on the back. I'm just trying to figure out what and how we want to do this. So I think we can really go like this. Do we want two strings or just one string? I can always clip that off after. And even a flower. Wait, is that pretty? I think that's pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue here. Your little loop of string is going to go right in the middle. Try to maximize the amount of glue. Let's just keep it a little bit stronger. And happy accident, we're going to put this little flower just like that. Okay. Then, let's look at it really quickly. We've got a string. Yeah, we want it to be kind of like that. So guess what? We're going to pull that string a little bit so that it will hang nicely and we can wrap it around this button. Then the last thing that we do is... some glue on it. My glue which doesn't wish to work anymore. It's all running out. But this is really great glue. The glue is expensive so we're going to use it all. I'm also going to show you how to reinforce these little tabs. Um, you just take a little Tim Holtz thing and you put a little tiny cute Paper clip right there and that'll also reinforce that so this is the closure it's gonna wrap around that button which we don't want to pull too hard because the glue is all still um, wet but it will it'll wrap around and then that'll close it'll keep the little thing closed okay so let's let this set up a little bit and we'll go on to our next um, envelope. In fact, I think I want to use a clamp. Just put a little clamp there for a little while. So this is like the last envelope that we need to do. So let's do some fancy stuff. <clears throat> I have these beautiful yellow flowers. I'm sorry, I sort of talk to myself as if I'm a child, but I just get excited by the beautiful things and all oh, the possibilities. So I really like that. I think I'm going to put that layer 
and then I'm going to put that layer over it. And we're going to rip it. You don't need all of this um, to be on the envelope. So, rip it like that. And we want, I think, more of the yellow. Remember, we're using yellow as an accent. So, we want to try and get all of this yellow on there. That's what makes a little scrap paper. Do something with later. And then, let's see. I was going to use some music paper, and I was I was thinking I would just put a little inky on it. So while the glue is wet, it's going to be a little, um, a ripple a little bit. You can always put it under a hook to flatten it and let it um, dry. I think I've got this slightly off, so we want to trim it. Evenly. When the corner, if the corners pull up, you can always go back later, and you glue them again. It's kind of common. Okay, so we have that like that, and I have. I am so lucky. A friend, Amelia. Thank you, Amelia. She sent me this hummingbird um, page cut out. So. Hooray, hooray. I've got a cute little bird to put on there. Put it down just like that. I really like it positioned so that you can see the little beak and everything. That's so pretty. Okay. Snip off that little end. All right, and then what can we do next? Put a little yellow. Right there. And then we have to figure out a little bit more for this side too. So I have a few more things I want to put on. Here. For instance, this is a thing from a magazine. It's like a yarn sample from an old magazine, so it has an older colorway. Um, and that can look really, really nice in collage. So, start gluing it down. And of course, we're going to try to get that yellow, yellow and the green, a little bit more than the red. <laughs> Okay. Same thing, we just these little pieces uh, will save and probably hole punch them later. Scissors are getting very gummy. All right. So 
will just make sure it's nice and flat. That's nice. Now we need a little closure for this. I think I've put round tabs on each of them so far, and I, I kind of like that. Um, so I think I'm going to do I'm going to do something a little bit different. I thought about putting maybe a butterfly. This is a yellow one. Oh, yeah, we need the yellow. So, something like that, maybe. Except, hmm, let me see. I have one ready made. Oh, I have a pile of junk over here. This is from a different book page. <laughs> yes, I have a pile of junk that you cannot see on camera. So I'm going to put it there. The little butterfly is going to go that way. And you know, before I do that, I'm going to ink it a little. Just because it might be hard to ink afterwards. So when you have old book pages that have pictures and you're kind of like not sure what to do with those pictures, if you want to do something with them, you can use your hole punches and um, get some different things that you can use for a collage. And that's one of the reasons why I'm making these journals is so that I can um, put different pieces for collage in them. have a little holder to organize my circles and my homemade stickers and words and you know things like that. Do I like that? I'll go with it. So there we go. And if you're into making big pen pail, um, you know, gifts, these are very fun to, to make for pen pails too. So, okay, so eventually these little things might come off. I might even just take them off. We'll see. I'm going to let that dry. Oh, before I do that, let's put the um, Velcro closure on it here. These are the little Velcro tabs. So the way I measure where I want that Velcro closure to go is I put the glue up here, just a little dab is necessary, and then I just close it. I put some of that glue there. I like to put the, <clears throat> I don't know, the hook and eye kind of part um, down on the bottom and the softer part up on the top. And like I said, these are repositional. Um, Velcro closures, which means that their glue is not very strong. So that's why I'm using the tacky glue. So I'm going to do a little bit more here. So this is, the, do I have that right? Yes, this is the top part. So this is the top part. Now we need a little bit more goodies over here. And I do like this. Let me just take them in. I got some different. This one has a butterfly. 
Um, and this is a Tim Holtz Botanical, and I don't remember the collection, probably like specimens or something. Pair them. Maybe not. Oh, and there's my timer. So that's 25 minutes. All right. <clears throat> thing probably I would do on this side is put a little something yellow like right over there I'm gonna work a little bit off camera and try to get this to the point where I can get them all um, into the folder and bind them so you can see that and then um, probably make just one more video so thank you for watching. I'm Jo and we are making a ephemera holder um, using collage envelopes. So this is the other one that we did. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye now.